Hey everyone, Graham from Boosted Performance here. I know we're long overdue for some Corolla updates and I apologize. We've been super busy doing a lot of tuning on these cars, doing a lot of development, racing the car. I feel like I owe you guys a lot of updates and we've got a lot of content filmed and we've got a lot of progress made on the platform. So stay tuned, I'm gonna get some videos done as soon as we can, but we've gotta keep up on everything else in the meantime. But today I wanna to do a quick video for you guys and talk about the tuning on these cars. We're actually selling a lot more tuning a lot quicker than we expected. So I wanna go over exactly how we're tuning and show you guys kind of how the process works and also show you how you use your EcuTech flash kit that we send with every single tune that we do. So some of these tunes we're doing in person at Limit Plus One, some of those tunes we're doing here at our location in Des Moines, Iowa. And some of you guys are shipping us your ECUs and we're putting a flash on there that matches your mods and shipping it back to you. No matter how you're getting tuned, you're always getting one of these EcuTech kits. That allows you guys to connect with the car so you can read and clear codes if you need to, monitor things and take data logs. I'm not gonna go into the full detail today about how to set all that up. We have other videos that show that exact process, but I'm gonna show you guys what's unique to the Corolla and show you guys a few things about that today. So here we go. All right, so the first thing I wanna show you guys today is how we're actually flashing the ECU on this car. We're not going through the OBD port inside the car yet. Hopefully at some point we can do that, but Toyota actually has the gateway in these cars, which means the OBD port connects through a system which then talks to the ECU. They have that gateway pretty locked down in terms of encryption. The good news is we can still go directly to the ECU to flash it. That part has been easy to crack. They've been doing that on the Yaris for quite a while. So I'm gonna show you guys what that process looks like. Thankfully, we don't have to actually pull the ECU out of some weird location on the car. It's right here, easy to access, and the plugs are right on top. So we can use our adapter cable here from Ecutech to get the flashing done. The other nice thing is we don't have to open up the ECU, connect to any pins, desolder, resolder, do any of the crazy stuff that some ECUs require to actually get started on the tuning. We can actually just hook right up and do the flashing that way. So here's what that looks like. So when we want to flash this car, we start by disconnecting all three connectors. Now, if we get to a point where you guys are doing this at home, you'll do these exact steps if you're flashing at the ECU. Simply pull these tabs up. There's a little push down here. Pull that one up. Push down here. Pull that one up. Disconnect all the plugs from the ECU. Now, if you guys are taking it out and shipping it to us, you guys are obviously doing those steps as well as unbolting it. But if we're flashing the car in person, or if you guys are flashing at home eventually, then you'll end up with an adapter that looks something like this here, where it's got a connector that matches the first one here. It's got a OBD port wired into it. It's got a power connection, red, and it's got a ground connection, black, as well as an on-off switch. So what we do is we put this on the first plug of the ECU here, latch it down, make sure it's secure. Now we've got a handy power connection right here off the battery. So we'll put our power clip right on there. I go right over the top, make sure it's very secure, not gonna pop off. We wouldn't want that to happen while it's flashing or it could corrupt the flash. For a ground connection, it's kind of hard to see in the video here, but straight down, there's a whole bunch of engine grounds that come together into a metal bracket. That's where I put my negative connector here. It's a nice spot right on the metal to grab that where it's very secure. Now at that point, I can check my switch here and we'll see it turns red to indicate that there's power going to the ECU and to the OBD connector. Now at this point, I plug in my OBD connector to my computer and I would send the flash to the ECU that way. If and when we reach a point where EcuTech allows flashing at home this way with such an adapter, you will take your EcuTech cable that connects to your phone via Bluetooth or to your computer via USB, and you'll plug that in here. You'll see it turns green. Now it's ready to communicate. So if we were able to do a phone flash or a laptop flash, at this point, you'd be ready to make that flash happen. Once we finish with the flash, we turn the power back off. Everything gets disconnected. We take that plug back off. We put our ECU plugs back on. Starting from the left, going to the right. We make sure everything is securely connected and we're all done. 
All right, now I want to show you guys the EcuTech kit, show you guys the EcuTech Connect software on the phone, and kind of explain how some of that works. One of my favorite things about EcuTech as a tuning software company is the ability to use your phone to monitor, to data log, and even flash maps. That makes it so much simpler than even some of the handheld programmers that are out there or having to dig out your computer and do things with that. If you can do it all from your smartphone that's already in your pocket, it makes life so much easier. And what's cool with EcuTech is it's all over a cloud, which means we can send you tune files through the cloud to flash to your ECU once they release the full flashing for these cars. You can take data logs that sync right back to your phone over Bluetooth and you can upload them straight to us again through the cloud. So it makes things very easy for you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and show you guys what's inside the case here and how it all connects. Honestly, not much in here. The main thing is the Bluetooth OBD flash device here. That plugs into your OBD port, which is just past your hood release here, like so. Green light comes on, indicating it's got a connection. You can leave this in all the time. If you're gonna park your car for an extremely long period of time, it doesn't hurt to unplug it to make sure it's not gonna drain the battery, but overnight, weeks at a time, you don't have to unplug it. It really only wakes up and does anything when the car's turned on. Otherwise, inside here, we've got a USB cable. If you have to do anything with your laptop, like update the firmware on here, or if, we're, if we have to do some laptop flashing for some reason, you'd use that cable to connect that to your computer. Otherwise, you're gonna use your phone for everything. You've got some stickers in here from EcuTech and from us. You've got a link here, a QR code that you can scan to download the EcuTech app for your phone. And that's it. All right, so once you guys have the EcuTech Connect app installed on your phone and you've created an account and you've synced with us as your tuner, you'll be all set to work with the car here. And by that I mean, once you have the key on and you click the My Car option here, That will connect to the device, connect to the ECU, and now we have some different things we can do. One thing we can do is use the DTC tool to check for codes and clear codes. Everybody knows at this point, um, until we have a fix for intake systems on these cars, we get codes for P0290C, I believe it is, for the EVAP system. The DTC tool, if you have that code, will show it to you here under engine, and it will allow you to clear it. So, that can keep the code away. You can see it before it actually lights up on the dash and you can clear it ahead of time. That can be kind of beneficial to avoid it coming on while you're going down the road. So that's the DTC tool. We can also check OBD readiness here. If you are in a state where you have to pass emissions, this can be very helpful to understand what systems of yours are completed, which ones are not. I just flashed the car, so I've got some things that aren't complete here, so don't worry about that. You can do the performance analyzer if you want to test the car, I don't recommend launching it with a stock clutch, it's not super strong. Then we've got the data logging option here. You can go into data logging and you can see all the different items that can be logged by the ECU. There's actually quite a bit of things in here. Don't worry about configuring it or messing with it. If we have to send you a preset file, we can do that. But by default, what gets logged is generally what we need. When you're connected, running the car, you can click the start button here and it'll start taking a log. And then when you're all done, you hit stop, and that finishes the log. If you're logging and you want to make a mark, if you notice something, you can do that with the add mark button. It can be kind of handy. But that's how you simply take a data log from that menu there. If we back out and go to the dashboard, now you're going to see live parameters from the ECU. Now this whole screen here can be customized. There's different ways to look at it in terms of what you're looking at, if you want to see gauges instead of numbers, I have it set up with numbers, that's what I prefer, but you can configure all that stuff in here and also make a second page of items, which is very cool. You can watch this while you're driving the car, kind of like an access port if you're used to Cobb, and see what the car's doing. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail right now about exactly what to log, but I'll show some of the things here that I've got and some of the things that you know I think are a little bit important to keep an eye on if you have your car tuned. The First one in the top, the first item here in the top left is the Lambda Actual. That is your true air fuel ratio on this car. When you're driving around, it's gonna stick near 1.0 and when you go into higher load or full throttle, it's gonna move down to a lower number 
basically indicating that the fuel is being enriched. We want that with a turbocharged car at high load to make sure we don't have detonation and also to get the best torque out of it. So you're gonna see that number move. Now, as a reference point, if we're on pump gas fuels, we're typically looking for as low as possibly 0.72 to 0.73, but more ideally closer to 0.75 to 0.76 lambda. And if we're on ethanol, we're higher than that. We're looking for closer to 0.78 to 0.82. Now you can convert those to air fuel ratios if that's what you're used to seeing. I'm not gonna go into all that detail now, but those are kind of the numbers that you're looking for there to make sure that it's not running too rich or too lean. Again, if you're concerned, you can data log it, you can send it to us. You've got the boost pressure up on the right in KPA. At this point, we can't change these units yet to PSI or change the lambda to AFR. Eventually we'll be able to do that, but for now, these are just the native units here. You can of course watch boost gauge on your dash, so you may not even wanna have that on here. On the left side here, I've got the short-term trim and the long-term fuel trims. These trims should typically stay within you know, zero to 10 to 15%. If they're getting really high up in the 20s or 30s, that might indicate you've got a math leak or a dirty math sensor. So those numbers can kind of help you understand what's normal, what's not for your fuel trims. Below the boost pressure, I've got the boost pressure target also in KPA. That can be helpful to see if your car is reaching the boost targets or not. Um, and you can understand what the boost targets are by watching that value. Uh, that can kind of let you know if possibly you have a boost leak. If your boost target is much higher than your boost pressure actual, then that could indicate a boost leak of some kind. If it's a little bit off, that's normal. We don't always necessarily reach exactly to the target, so keep that in mind. I've also got turbocharger intake temperature. That is the actual air temperature going in the engine. So that's an indicator of how heat soaked your intercooler is while you're driving it. Or if you're on the track and this number is rising and rising, you might know to kind of back off, take an easier lap. As far as what's safe and what's not, up to 120, 130 degrees, especially if you're using E40, isn't too scary. Beyond that point, it will start pulling back quite a bit of power naturally with the tune because of the higher intake temperatures risking detonation. So something you can keep an eye on there. Your intake air temp is the temperature of the air coming into the engine. Um, that can be helpful to see how well your intake's working, if you're getting some hot air or if you're getting more ambient air that matches the temperature around you, that'll tell you if your intake's working well or not. We've also got on here um, low side fuel supply pressure that would let you know if your fuel pressure is not keeping up for some reason during high loads. Should be, shouldn't be a problem on these cars, but I've got it on here. Then finally at the bottom, these are your two knock indicators. And the one on the left, the knock correction angle, it's gonna hover around negative three. Now, we don't know exactly at this point why Toyota chose negative three to be sort of the zero point, but for whatever reason, negative three indicates that neither timing is being removed or added to the base timing that the map is calling for. If the number goes lower than negative three, say it goes down to negative six, that would indicate that three degrees of timing is being removed. If it's negative four, that would indicate one degree of timing is being removed and so on. If it goes higher than negative three, if it goes up to negative two, negative one, zero, if it goes in the positive direction, that actually indicates that the ECU is putting timing back in for whatever reason. Toyota chose to do a very dynamic timing system in this car, which basically means that based on feedback from the knock sensor, they'll both add and remove timing to try to be as optimal as possible, even if that does mean getting some knock from the engine to then pull back again. Kind of a strange strategy, but that's pretty common these days in these modern vehicles. We tend to do a strategy where we put an amount of timing in the car that is always gonna be pretty ideal and should have very little knock, and it doesn't have to do as much learning. It can pull it back if it needs to for bad fuels, but it really shouldn't be needing to or trying to add a lot with our tune. The number on the right here is the knock correction learn value. If you happen to come from Subarus or other types of vehicles that use an octane multiplier or a dynamic advance multiplier or anything like that, that's kind of how this number functions. Again, we don't know why 24.1 is basically the top end, but it is, and it can go lower than that value. It can go all the way down towards zero. I've seen as low as 15 for the number here on some really, really crappy 91 octane that might not have even been 91. So that number can go pretty low. And when that number goes lower, that means the ECU is pulling away timing 
across the board essentially to protect itself against lower grade fuels. So that's a good number to kind of keep an eye on. If you're on E40, it's almost always gonna be 22 to 24 or hanging out at 24 because you should see very little knock on the E40 mix tune that we've got. If you're on 93, again, it should stay pretty high, at least above 20. If you're on 91, it might move down a little bit lower, but we typically start with less timing on those tunes so it doesn't have to move as much. But that can kind of give you an indicator of how the car's running to some degree there. So that's your dashboard there. The other cool thing you can do from your dashboard is actually start a log. If you hit the start button, it will start logging everything that's in the logging profile, not just what's on the screen here. So don't feel like you have to go back to logging to do a log. If you wanna catch something, you can do it from here. Then you can hit stop and it's done. Now backing out of here and getting out of the My Car menu will take us back to a point here where we can interact with our data log files. So if we go to My Files, the most important thing here we can do right now with these cars is see our data logs. So I can see these two logs that I took tonight while I was showing you guys the video here. I can select them. I can add a comment to explain what they were. And so I'll call that test log. And then down here at the bottom, I can hit the upload icon and as long as you have us selected as the tuner, it'll say send to Boosted Performance Tuning. You click that, enter a description again for the logs you're sending. Say this is, you know, nighttime test or whatever. Hit done and away it goes. That's gonna send us an email with those data logs and you can actually come back here and you can select multiple logs and send them all at once. You don't have to send them one at a time. So that allows you to get data logs to us to be checked. Now, if I back out again, we've got your performance results, you've got your DTC reports, you've got dashboards, you can save and upload dashboards and we'll work on creating some of those and trying to send those through the app once that's supported. You've also got your flash files. Now, obviously at this point, we don't have any flash files for the Corolla. We can't flash them yet, but once we can, those would show up there when we send them to you and you kick off a flash from there. You've also got programming logs, ROM dumps and logging profiles, other things that we can interact with the car eventually once we're ready to do some more. So that's pretty much it for the moment with the Ecutech app. We can do everything with it except for the actual flashing, but that should be coming here very soon. So that's it for today's episode on tuning. I hope you guys find this informative and interesting and learn a bit more about what we can do with the tuning and how we're doing the tuning, kind of some of the ins and outs of it, what we can do, what we can't do. Hopefully I have updates for you guys very soon from Ecutech as they get more features done and we can actually flash the cars at home yourself using your phone. That'll be very exciting. Race ROM features, launch control, flat foot shift, start to use some of these different sport modes to do different things. There's a lot of potential here with this platform and Ecutech is actively working on getting that done for you guys. So as soon as those features are out, we'll release those to you guys and show you guys more. But in the meantime, we're happy to continue getting these cars flashed in person. We can do it here at our shop. We can do it at Limit Plus One in Chicago. Those are our two main locations. You can, of course, also purchase the bench flash option through Limit Plus One on their website. You fill out the information of your mods. You ship your ECU here to us to flash or to Limit Plus One if we're going to be there for that week tuning. And we'll get it flashed with a tune for you guys and get it sent back to you. That sets you all up with Ecutech and licenses everything for you. That means that once the phone flashing comes, we can send you tune updates. You won't need to buy a license again. You'll just do everything I showed you here today yourself. If you guys have any additional questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or drop us a line or contact Limit Plus One. We're happy to get those answered for you guys. We're gonna work on another video here very soon showing what we've been doing with the car on the track. It's been very, very fun to get this car more developed. We've got aero on the car now. We've got brake cooling kits. We've got all kinds of fun stuff. We're a few weeks away from going to Laguna Seca with the car. We're very excited about that, but I do want to catch you guys up in the meantime about how it went at Mid-Ohio and how it went last weekend at Heartland Motorsport Park in Topeka. So stay tuned for those videos and we'll see you guys soon.